my screen is visible right and also i will take pause in between for questions so in today's uh, uh this short session what we will cover is uh, the latest llm research and how can one custom uh, fine tune uh, an open source llm like llama 2 uh actually more than that in today's talk we will start with the latest bre breakthroughs in llms uh, so basically after chat gpt bard came hugging chat uh hugging chat came hugging chat is currently uh hosting the llama v2 model falcon model came multiple open source llm models came and day by day every other day we see new model coming so what are the latest breakthroughs that has happened a part of uh just a chat gpt being there which can reply to our questions so like uh, what are the different changes which have happened in this model we'll talk about them and we'll also see how can one fine tune the uh, llama 2 uh, uh, model which is the latest and most powerful model at current times but definitely in future more powerful model will come and uh, so the interesting part will be in first once we have covered the theory i will show you how you can take a gpt type model uh, and fine tune it to create your own chat GPT type model. So what is a GPT type model? GPT type model is just a raw model, which is trained on next word prediction. We'll see in more details. How can you fine tune it to create a conversational model, which can answer your questions uh, and so on. And uh, also I will cover a trick by which uh, uh, you can take a larger model and fine tune a smaller model. And this will be pretty helpful in some of your, let's say, uh, if some of you are working in some projects or some industry problems where uh, there is also a cost associated with using LLMs. But when you are using a smaller model, let's say 7 million parameter model, which can fit in a single GPU, but definitely it can happen. The performance is not as good as a larger parameter model. How can you use this trick to uh, fine tune your <clears throat> smaller model? using the data of a bigger model to get almost similar performance in that task specific fine tuning. So yeah, we'll cover all of these. So with that, uh, let's start the content. And also I want to uh, tell one more thing. Most of the content is available there in my channel as well, which is the data track. Uh, what I have done, like if you see, this is how to supercharge Llama 2, the fine tuning part, Falcon, and this is again Llama 2's Falcon. And then uh, what are the theory that I will be talking about? Flash attention, sparse attention, quantization, pruning. And uh, previous two videos also I have made. So what I have done for this session, I, I won't be able to cover every, every of those material in 30 minutes. So I have condensed the topic to uh, cover the most important parts and make it keep it as interesting as possible. But instead, in some topic, if you want to deep dive, you can definitely go and refer to the uh, videos and also all the uh, those. Uh, finally, you will need codes also, right? The codes that I will be showcasing will be here only in uh, this Lama 2. The Lama 2 code will be there and other Lama 2 code will be here. The first code that I will show will be here and second code will be in the description of this one. So, yeah. Okay. So It's on the GitHub, right? Uh, it's not on the GitHub. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's start the main uh, theory part, the main uh, content part, I would say. So conversational LLMs such as chat GPT or BARD are based on transformer architecture. So yeah, so this paper, the transformer architecture is called one of the most uh, groundbreaking event in AI because it changed everything. Post this transformer models, our, our uh, most of our NLP tasks uh, we started getting better results. And if you see GPT, chat GPT, BARD, all of these LLMs are based on transformer architecture only. So this is the most groundbreaking discovery that happened in data science. And um, like, why is this transformer architecture so powerful? Because it uh, gave us two main, um, what to say, like two main ideas. One was self-attention. Self-attention basically means, attention was there before as well, but self-attention means uh, given a sentence, the word can attend to other words in it. For example, let's say uh, uh, I want to play. So I want to play. Want and like want is for something that is play. So I want to play. So want has a strong uh, attention towards the word, word play. So in this way, the words can attend to other words in its, in its neighborhood. 
that's why the self attention mechanism is very powerful and secondly previously when there was lstm rnn and all those kind of sequential model the input used to go one by one but this attention mechanism provided a provided a mechanism with which we can pass the entire input at once and there will be positional encodings which will take care of positions and there will be self attention which will ensure that the world are words are able to pay attention to the right word uh, in the whole context so that's why self attention and secondly uh, moving away from that sequential mechanism to parallel mechanism which also is speeded up the things there the two uh, major ideas apart of that there were many other ideas which the paper presented but these are the two most influential ideas i would say which uh, came out as an output of this paper and uh, all the llms are based on transformer architecture mostly they use the decoder part of it there is an encoder and there is a decoder part of it they use the decoder part of it and uh, the conversational llms are built on top of gpt model which is trained to trained on next word prediction task in an auto regressive way on entire internet data so 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 let's understand this what is a gpt model a gpt model is generative pre trained transformer which is just trained on entire internet data to predict the next word it's pretty good in predicting what would come next and and it's trained using auto regressive way on the entire internet data auto regressive means you don't have to have a supervised data set as in it will just take the next word and try to predict it then take the take the that next word would now become the input it will again predict the next word next word and so on now this model is very powerful because it has learned from entire internet data and secondly it has so many pa parameters that it will memorize um, all the um, all the data in its memory so so you would have thought like when you ask something you chat gpt why is it able to answer because it has so many parameters and it's storing those information in those parameters how we don't know but those parameters are the memory uh, where it stores the learned information so so we have see, uh, understood this gpt model is just trained on next word prediction on the entire internet data but what open ai chat gpt people did they wanted to create not just a next word prediction model but a question answering uh, model which if you can give a question it can reply you with an answer it's more conversational in nature so what they did they took the base gpt model and fine tuned it on meticulously designed question answering data set that is conversational data set and there were more details there are more details to it which i have covered in some of my videos so here just quickly touching it like fine tuning process also includes optimization like reward model for, for a question there can be four or five possible answers so which is the best answer so human would have labeled it and how the hum human is labeling they create a model out of it which becomes a reward model so depending on the answers the model will reward which is a better answer out of the four um and and this is a probabilistic model as in like if you ask uh, one question to chat gpt or any of these llms it will give an answer next time if you ask the same question the overall intent may be same but the word choices may be different because it's probabilistic and it uh, one word is sampled at a time so uh, out of all the answers that it would have given there is a reward model which try to assess the best quality uh, output and also they used proximal policy optimization ppo uh, uh, which is a reinforcement learning te technique that strikes the balance between exploit and explore so basically sometimes you also want some interesting answers right so that interestingness has to be uh, that interestingness should also be have a check so this uh, ppo policy strikes that balance or check between explore and exploit and even uh, so out of all the open source models that came post uh, chat gpt and bard ai like falcon and uh, uh, llama v2 llama v2 is considered the best among all the open source llms at present because uh, i think it has also used the reinforcement learning technique so uh, so you can see like it has it is also trained on reinforcement learning from human feedback i think falcon was not trained in this way but uh, llama v2 is trained on reinforcement learning through human feedback so there is a very popular technique but it has to be done very carefully i was seeing one of the Kar karpathes uh, video he was also saying the same thing that either you train on question answering data set and if you are doing ppo reinforcement learning you have to be very careful it has to be like that right balance between exploit and explore needs to be there and um, uh yeah so these are some of the techniques so now we have understood that a gpt model which is trained on next word prediction can be trained on question answering data set 
to get a uh, chat gpt or conversational type of model and in that process we can use this kind of optimization like reward models having a reinforcement learning techniques to better strike the balance between exploit and explore so uh, next uh, as the top Abhishek, does that try sorry does that explore and exploit trade off directly translates to a temperature in uh, open ai terms right uh, as an example if you want to explore more you would keep the temperature high and if you want to ex explore less and provide the exact answer it, you would keep the temperature near to zero or zero uh true so there is a temp so mm. this is different this is this uh, reward model the the ppo policy it's it's in the way the model was trained but the uh, temperature parameter that you see yes that is between the explore exploit in the output that you want to get from the model so basically uh, that if you you can play with temperature and if you want more interesting answers you you will uh, you uh, if you want more creative answers then you can play with the temperature parameter and i would also show uh, this is the version that microsoft has released the the bing version they have this thing more creative more balanced and more precise and what it does is it just changes the temperature, temperature. yeah but but what i am talking here reinforcement learning that is a technique that is used during the training but okay. in, the, in the output that you want you can play the interestingness through the temperature parameter next is uh, uh, we'll talk about some of the latest research areas where the research is uh, happening uh one research is happening around improving the efficiency and scalability of llm architecture so uh we know that uh chat gpt has a limitations uh in the number of words we can pass in the context it when it was launched it has uh 4 000 tokens limitations that within the context only 4k tokens can be passed so uh, the first research is going around improving the efficiency and scalability of LLM, which can be through larger context window or reducing the cost and memory footprint using pruning, distillation, quantization, sparsification techniques. We'll talk about some of them in brief. Uh, and these techniques are very important because these have enabled us. Like you can, uh, you would have seen in uh, my video as well. I took a Google Colab notebook and uh, the free GPU and trained a. 8 billion parameter model why is it possible 8 billion parameter is too many right but still i was able to train and fine tune it because of these techniques this so we'll understand that why it reduces the memory footprint and makes it possible to uh, even fine tune a model in just a single gpu uh, there is also techniques like lora and all we will see that as well yeah i was talking about lora use techniques like lora lora for fine tuning which is lorank adapters on device with limited computational resource so these a lot of research is going around this part as well which can one make the llm more efficient scalable and scalable and second is going around the enhancing and accuracy the accuracy and diversity of llm that is uh, the output that you get is not just hallucinated output or just random output but it's more fact checked or if you can get some references in the output that why it returned a particular output that is the second research area and third i would say is going around uh, uh, ethical ai which is addressing the ethical and social challenges of llms that is mitigating the bias uh, making it less toxic evaluating the fairness of the model and also the explainability of it so uh, first one is the scalability one and uh, one thing one limitation in current llms was the uh, context window which is only of 4k tech tokens how can we make the context window 100k because as we make the context window larger uh, the computation will increase because in the self attention it has every word has to attend to every other word right um, and find the importance so computation will increase and also how efficient the model will remain if the context window is that large we don't know right so some of the key ingredients which have still made the large context window possible is one one technique is just train the model on 2k tokens context that is smaller context where we can train it and fine tune it on a larger context so that um, the training time is lesser because you are training on a smaller context but during the fine tuning part you can use a larger context this is one trick second uh, some people say that the positional sinusoidal embedding is not very good because the sine wave has a cyclic pattern and as the context gets bigger that uh, cyclic pattern has a limitations that's why people came up with 
alibi kind of positional embedding. I won't go into details of it. I will only cover the most important parts which has made this larger context window possible. Uh, so there, I think we should now uh, definitely call out sparse attention. So as I was saying, if the context window is larger, every word has to attend to every other words and it's a compute extensive thing. So the idea of sparse attention is that the word won't attend to every other word. It will only attend to the most important words in its neighborhood. And this will reduce the number of computation. And what can be some of the approaches? The approaches can be, as I was saying, it can be a sliding window. That is, it can only attend to K of its neighbor in left and K, and K of its neighbor in right. Or other method can be, it can be a graph based uh, relationship between elements. And it uh, a, a uh, word will only attend to the most important words, which maybe some graph model is able to predict that these are the words which can have more importance to. But not all the words will be attended to. The importance won't be calculated with each and every word. And here, when I call uh, say importance, actually, if we uh, if if you know the uh, uh, transformer architecture, there is key, query key and value vectors. It's the it's an idea which is uh, motivated from uh, uh, retrieval. That is when you search for something, you you have a query, and out of all the keys, uh, you will uh, the, you need to find which key is more important. So. Q and K gets multiplied query and key vector. And uh, like once we know that which keys are more important, those value vectors uh, we will give more weightage to. So first Q and K gets multiplied and then the output gets multiplied with the value vector. In that way, the importance comes out. But here we will limit it. We won't calculate the importance with each and every word, but we will only compute in either the neighborhood or through some other heuristic methods. That's the idea of sparse attention. And it reduces the computation by a large extent. And uh, go Abhishek, ahead. I had a few questions. Go ahead. Around this. So uh, correct me if uh, I'm wrong somewhere, right? When we talk about uh, a context window, we are talking in terms of the, it would come into the picture at the time of inference, right? When you are uh, talking to LLM and an LLM would generate a response and you would get a, you would give it a context, right? So uh, it will come uh, both in times of in time of inference as well as training because in training also uh, in training also the model needs to learn that how to give importance right because mm -hmm. in, during the inference it has already learned how to give importance but how that uh, but making it learn that how to give importance what should be the so when I say Q K view V these are uh, query key and value matrices attached to each attention head and these parameters have to be learned. So during the training, the parameters will be learned. And once it has learned the parameters during the inferencing, there won't be any parameter changes. Only those parameters will be used to uh, perform the task. And uh, when I say sparse attention in the training itself, the train, um, the um, methodology will be to give uh, not to attend to each and every word and learn parameters in that way. And those learned parameters will be used during inference just to predict an output. Okay. Hmm. So context window is decided at the training time only. And that's what model supports in the future. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, cool. I had a few more questions, but I think I'll keep it at the end. Uh, sure. It was more regarding the RAG approach, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we will, we will, we, we can do one thing. We can also take pause in between. I will take pause in between where we can take some of the questions. And uh, like, uh, just let me stop share for a second. Is are there any questions in chat? No. Okay, guys. Like, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat window, and we'll cover all of them. Sure. And also, I will take break in between for questions. Uh, Think of it as a uh, discussion that is going on. So we'll, we are just discussing some topic and if there are any good questions, uh, we'll take it. And many of the videos that I make are from some of the questions that someone would have asked me how to do this. And I would also think like, Aha, ye achha question hai. how can we solve this particular uh, problem? Not just related to LM, any problem, any particular problem they would uh, want to discuss with me. And then I will end up creating some solution out of it and uh, um, making a video out of it. So definitely it's a discussion and it's a two way learning. Uh, like the question that Utsav asked, I had to also think a little bit to answer. 
तो या इट्स अ टू वे लर्निंग वी जस्ट डिस्कस एंड दैट देन सम आइडिया कम्स राइट सो लेट्स विल कीप पॉज इन बिटवीन वी विल हैव दैट वन ऑन वन डिस्कशंस एज वेल नेक्स्ट इज मोर ऑफ ए हार्डवेयर ऑप्टिमाइजेशन व्हिच इज फ्लैश अटेंशन इन फ्लैश अटेंशन व्हाट इज डन इज द जीपीयू इज द एल्गोरिथम इज ऑप्टिमाइज्ड फॉर द जीपीयू Uh, the gpu can memory can be divided into main memory of gpu gpu high bandwidth memory and gpu static ram static ram is the smallest and then uh, bigger is the gpu high bandwidth memory and then is the main memory now if you as i was also telling in the sparse attention that q and k gets multiplied we get a matrix for that matrix we calculate the softmax and that that softmax is multiplied by the value vector and that becomes our final output for from that attention head so what happens in that standard attention implementation uh, of the first transformer paper but now we need to do things differently because we want to uh, we have huge parameters model we want to run in a smaller machine a smaller gpu so optimizations have to be done and what is that optimization this algorithm itself was tweaked to get the same output but in a more gpu friendly way how it was done was i will just cover it in brief uh, so as i said q and k gets multiplied it is stored and again softmax is calculated and uh, stored and whenever something compute happens it happens here and then it is stored in the high bandwidth memory and why are we storing every time like why not if we know this multiplication we have to put softmax and then multiply it with the v vector why don't we simply do it and uh, store it right but there is a challenge why don't why do why do we store we store because in the backward pass when the gradient learnings happen then in that time these metrics are needed for the gradient learning that's why they are stored but what flash attention did it did two optimization one is uh uh that the to calculate the softmax softmax like uh, so how is softmax calculated if you have this kind of vector you need to uh, like take exponential exponentiation of the value divided by the exponentiation of all the values so when i say all the values it needs the whole output it needs the complete s matrix to be available then only it can compute the softmax but with flash attention they use tiling it's a trick by which the softmax uh, we don't need the whole input to be accessible to compute the softmax we can compute softmax in small tiles and if we uh, see the final result it's same as calculating softmax in the whole input so this is one tiling mechanism some mathematical trick they use with which softmax can be broken into uh, tiles and second trick that they used was instead of storing the now we have like uh, already solved the softmax part now the second thing was we were storing the matrix because they were using getting used in backward pass for gradient learning second optimization it did was let's not store the matrix let's recompute it whenever it's needed and what happens because of this the number of floating point operations increases because we are recomputing it but it uh, overall time reduces because there is lesser uh hopping of hopping between memory so if you see here uh load this from high bin, bandwidth memory to sram and then again store it from sram to high bit bandwidth memory so uh, flash attention what it does it modifies the attention mechanism to reduce the number of memory reads and writes between gpu high bandwidth memory and gpu sram so in, even if the flops floating point operation has increases but uh overall time reduces because that hopping between memory reduces so this is one of the optimization they use and also sometimes people ask me that uh, like a bit different from what we are discussing um one should be machine learning engineer or one should be data scientist i feel i strongly feel in today's world there is uh, we can't differentiate between ml engineer or a software engineer or a data scientist because if you see uh to make to optimize llm we can't just do uh changes in the algorithm sometimes we have to do hardware level optimization so the knowledge of having like the engineering right engineering skills and data science skills both are needed so i don't see data science or data, being a data scientist or machine learning engineer being a two different things because in today's world one has to adapt with all these changing uh technologies and while adapting one has to learn everything that uh, let's key uh, without sparse attention what was the compute what was the number of computation and with just this uh, neighborhood consideration how much the compute reduced what could be the optimizations in memory one can do in flash attention and it 
it's a engineering skill more than the data science skill so one has to be good in both uh, data science and machine learning uh, and, and and engineering to be a full stack data scientist in today's time that is my personal opinion uh, yeah just moving ahead yeah so other uh, optimization these llms the current llms are doing is around the multi query attention uh, so what is multi query attention the main transformer paper which i was uh, talking about has multi headed attention which is a separate k q and v vectors for uh, each head each head will have its own key and value matrices but multi multi query attention says that we don't need separate uh, uh, k v and q for each head we can just have one key value head and just the query heads can differ that is query vector will be different but key and value vector for, for all the heads will be same and what it does is it just reduces the memo memory right like let's say you have 96 heads in your uh, llm now for each head i am using the same uh, uh, k and value matrix then uh, the key and value matrix is shared which reduces in 96x reduced memory consumption and they say that output is not uh the quality of the llm's output is not much uh, degraded because the query vector is different so the query matrix is different for each head so it's called multi query attention basically in where the multi head attention had separate key value and query for each head we are just having uh query heads different but key and value same and it reduces the number of computations and lama 2 even goes one step further and it uses uh attention it uses grouped query attention even i haven't gone much detail into it but it uses grouped query attention it's similar to multi query attention i believe but i haven't gone much into details of that and uh, fourth point is very uh, obvious that use a larger ram G larger ram in gpu and as well as a uh, high memory gpu because these larger parameter models will need more uh, mem gpu memory so uh, that was more uh, around uh, the larger context window like sparse attention multi query attention flash attention these techno and using this trick of training on smaller context but fine tuning on longer context and replacing the positional embedding with some alibi alibi kind of motivated embeddings or solves the problem of large context window that is it it makes the model more scalable to larger uh, more tokens uh second is more around reducing the cost and memory and uh, i will very quickly touch upon that so how to reduce the memory footprints one idea is pruning that is the after the training remove some of the weights or layers which are redundant or not so important how can you find not so important you can see the uh, like there are techniques by which you can see the gradients how much gradients update happens because of those layers or those weights the not so important ones you can prune it so this is one technique second is knowledge distillation knowledge distillation is like uh, uh, if i have to train uh, a 7 billion parameter model then instead of training it from scratch what we can do is we can use the 70 billion parameter model and use the learnings of it to train a smaller model and it's seen that when training from a scratch it doesn't learn that faster and interesting patterns as much it learns from the learning of a uh, larger model and if you think why is that a larger model would have already identified the pattern removed or or bifurcated the um, uh, noise that this this is a pattern and this is a noise now when we train a smaller model from scratch it will have to relearn those things and also it has not that much power because it has lesser parameters but when you already just train it on the learning of a larger model it is able to learn faster so uh, distillation is uh, one such technique i have a video coming on this topic as well and sparse attention we have already seen that is not pay attention to all the words but only to the important words is uh, the distillation based on that stanford research guys that came up with this uh, is that the uh, no 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 that is flash attention that's flash okay other technique for reducing the memory footprint is quantization here i would like to give some focus because if you when we will go to the fine tuning part when we will see the codes we will see that the models are loaded in 8 bit or 4 bits uh, so what is that like why is it what has made it possible to load such huge parameter models in a single gpu and one the idea is quantization so the quantization is a technique 
that reduces the precision or uh, bits of the weights and activations of LLM. So, so, so let's understand it in more details. Uh, when we say a neural network, neural network consists of various layers and each layer has its own parameters. These parameters are nothing but weights and those weights, let's say is between minus one to plus one. And uh, that weight can be anything in between. It can be 0 0.2345, something like that, right? So we know that to store these weights, like these weights or the parameters of the model, we need float floating point data type, right? And how much memory a floating point data type takes? It, it depends, but mostly uh, float takes 32 bits, 32 bits to store the uh, one value, which is one parameter, right? Now, what somehow if I can store that 32 bit parameter into a 8 bit parameter, I will be able to reduce the memory footprint of my entire model by 4x, right? Because uh, there will be multiple layers, each layer will have parameters and every parameter I am, instead of storing it as a 32 bit, I am storing it as a 8 bit, then it will reduce the memory footprint by four, uh, four times. And how is that possible? Like, how is it even possible to store a floating point number in that precision to in, into an 8 bit integer? It's so that is possible with simple mathematics. Uh, that is how can you uh, map from one range to another. So let's say I have one range. I want to map it to another integer range. So uh, how, it, how it can be done? It's simple mathematics that is key total range. Kya hai. So the total range range of this is one minus minus one, two, right? So basically minus one, zero, one. So it's a uh, the total range is two. And what is the total range here? I have it's 255, right? So this is a total range. Now. I can calculate the scale, uh, which is if I just divide this range, the scale of this range divided by the scale of this range, I will get a scale factor. Now I can also calculate the zero point that minus one to plus one somewhere zero will also lie. When zero comes, what will be the value in between? So it's pretty obvious My zero comes in between. So here the value will be the midpoint 128. So now with just these two values, which is scale and zero point. And if you, uh, after this session, you just do the mathematics, ki koi bhi range le lena minus X to Y and X one to Y one. How can you range each? How can you map each number from this range to another range? Uh, and you will end up in something like sim similar formula that what you will calculate the, uh, the, the total is range scale of this. Uh, the first range and second uh, range scale of the second range. And then you will do this kind of mathematics only. And when you do it in paper, you will be able to uh, 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 find this yourself. Now we have these two values. One is a scale factor and zero point with the, just these two values. I can cal I can map any real value to its integer value. Uh, and similarly, given any real value, find its integer value. And also you can see a round here, right? Round because here the numbers can have great precision, but here just I have 255 values to map it there definitely. So some precision loss will be there, but still with that precision lo loss, we will be able to uh, store all the parameters in just eight bit integer. And uh, when the inference happens, there will always be a conversion from integer to float, float to integer. That's why post uh, like using this quantization, you will see the model become slow because of this conversion from integer to float, float to integer. Uh, but you are able to do that in a smaller uh, memory system because you have you are using four x times lesser memory. And also there are two types of quantization: post and quantization aware. Uh, one is like after the training, just do quantization, and second is during the training itself, make sure that quantization is happening and a quantization aware one takes more time for train, but it is slightly better than the post training. One more technique is LoRa. LoRa is uh, uh, when we'll go to the fine tuning part, we will also see uh, that uh, the the PEFT libraries, which is parameter efficient fine tuning, uses uh, something like LoRa config. Now, what is LoRa config? Uh, uh, so when we are fine tuning, the parameters have to change, right? In fine tuning, the parameters changes. What what LoRa does it? It says that the actual parameter, the actual parameters will be freezed and we will add adapters to each layer. 
let me keep uh, explain that again so the actual model ke kuch 7 let's say take a llama v2 7 billion model the 7 billion parameters will remain as it is no change in the parameter we won't fine tune them we will add adapters to each layer and those adapters parameters will change and even in those adapters we will use matrix factorization so that we have lesser parameters than actually needed so let me explain suppose you have a uh, suppose uh, the layer where you are putting an adapter is of size 100 cross 100 that is 10,000 parameters are there. Now I need to put an adapter which will also have 10,000 parameters right because then only W plus delta W will happen and delta W is the gradient. So as many parameters I have I need those many gradients uh, those many uh, delta W or gradient parameters also to, uh, to uh, do the final changes in the uh, in the uh, uh, learning so basically something like this if you if you know the gradient descent uh, w gets are delta w gets added and delta w i need 10000 parameters again but what loda will do it it will use matrix factorization that is instead of using 10000 parameters it will use two matrix uh, so so think of it in this way i need a delta w matrix which is this uh, tall and fat so one way is I can you uh, learn these parameters or I won't learn these parameters. I will learn two different metrics, which is one is tall and thin. Second is short and fat. And what will happen if you see the matrix is 100 cross 10 and the second matrix will be 10 cross 100. If you multiply 100 cross 10, 10 cross 100, you will get 100 cross 100, which is actually 10,000 only. So basically learning. Uh, lesser parameters because of matrix factorization where previously you would have learned 10,000. Now we will only learn 2000 parameters and during the grade, uh, like gradient update, only these adapters parameters will change and uh, like U and V when multiplied, it will become 10,000 only. So the blue is still the fine tuning will happen. So, uh, the, uh, summarizing what LoRa does, it keeps the actual parameter as it is, freezes the parameter, just add adapters to the layers. And those adapters also, it reduces the parameters by using uh, matrix factorization so that the number of parameters we learn during the process are lesser. So I think we have covered most of the critical and tough theory part. Now it's just the simple part is left and then we'll simply jump to the um, fine tuning. So uh, any questions on efficiency and scalability of LM, just quick one, two questions, uh, because this was the most critical part, which I wanted to make it, keep it interesting because this is where people may, might get bored. Iske baad, all the interesting part are there. Abhishek on quantization, like, isn't like I, uh, in all these models, a lot of floating point multiplication must be happening, right? Hmm. So that domain to co-domain uh, mapping that you explained from float to given 8-bit integer mapping. Hmm. Uh, like I'm not able to get the point where uh, I think, uh, and you have mentioned it, it would lose an accuracy, but I think it would lose an accuracy at a very great extent because uh, uh, even at the inference time, those floating point multiplication must be happening, right? And no matter how much precise your floating point is, it would go unprecise at one point, right? When you do 256 cross 256 multiplication, uh, some of them would not be same, but still be same because you have a limitation on how much beats you can store, how precise your floating point numbers are, correct? And that's why I think... Uh, LLMs generate a uh, different answers for a given uh, question every time because it's ultimately doing the floating point multiplications and uh, that every time it multiplies, there will be some answers with the same probabilities, right? Even, uh, and it can choose from one among them. So uh, I think with this domain to co-domain mapping, uh, I, I, I mean to say this float to integer mapping, wouldn't it be the case that it would increase, right? And um, I understand the memory footprint reduces. I understand that point completely. But uh, the part accuracy. Sure. So, 
yeah just just briefly giving the answers and moving on so you are talking uh, two different parts so one is that why llm give different answer different times the temperature parameter those are different so okay. how why llms give different output at different times is because once it has the softmax distribution it samples from it because of the sampling it gives different output like you, if you have numbers you if you have five uh, let's say you have a dice every time you roll you get a number and that that word gets sampled so it's because of the sampling which is probabilistic in nature it gives different uh, outputs different time that has nothing to do with quantization and what is quantization quantization is basically that all the 7 billion parameters are in floating points instead of that we will uh, read it in integer uh, like we will convert map it into integer uh, range and uh, uh, read it definitely there will be a prison loss a lot of um, uh, accuracy loss but it seen that it works because and if you ask me why it could be because there are so many parameters so many layers and we are doing the um, like uh, conversion for each and every layer so uh, it it works it works and uh, definitely there will be prison loss lot of overlap but it seen that it it works okay um uh, okay Yours. is there a example real life example on this yeah yeah we'll, we will we, we, in the fine tuning notebooks we will we will do a eight bit quantization and then oh, nice. fine tuning great hmm. yeah no more questions sure so uh, this is the first research area which is more around increasing the efficiency and scalability of llm next we will uh, quickly see that uh, how to make it more accurate and fact checked the output right so some of the techniques used here are um, and and why is it important at the first place it's important because llms hallucinate hallucinate a lot for example i was asking it that give me some research paper from advertising advertisement domain it gave me nice research papers the link of it and the author details and when i clicked on link or searched for it those were random papers like those were uh, irrelevant and papers which doesn't exist it was just making it out making out the author's name paper's name everything it was it was hallucinating similarly i asked it that give me this section like section uh, x of this law it gave me the details and actually that section which i gave didn't exist it just hallucinated and why it does that because as i was explaining to utsav also it's a sampling which just sample words and give some one word at a time right uh where it has learned well it would give the right words but where it has uh, like something of that doesn't exist it will still just sample and give some words right so how to make make these outputs more fact checked and uh, maybe attach some link to it where it give the answers from so that is the second research area the techniques used here is uh, one is like uh, like what google bard does when you ask it a questions it give you an answer and also gives you this kind of feedback like it don't like it or google it so in this type of feedbacks the model can continuously learn that where it is hallucinating it will have a strong penalty for hallucinating right because of this uh, labels and second thing which i like and which i think is the future is retrieval augmented generation till now whatever chat gpt all this all or all these llms are giving output is from the memory in as i was saying that it has learned the entire internet data and that is stored in those parameters of it now we call it memory learned output but what if we can make it retrieval augmented that is when i ask what is xgboost to the gpt4 model which has been integrated by microsoft bing it also give me the references and uh, that where it get the answer from so how that thing works is it can be done in two ways like uh, when i ask a question do a google a microsoft search bing search or google search the important web pages also pass in the context and when when you given output um, uh, also refer that which pages you referenced more so in that way for a question uh, we will have the answers as well as references because in retrieval augmented llms we are giving the web links also as a reference so it can uh, link back that where that answer came from so yeah this is also called knowledge injection or retrieval augmented generation while just getting the llm output from what is a, it has learned from memory is just memory based and uh, this is how the uh, accuracy and diversity sorry this is how the uh, accuracy and uh, fact 
check uh, like correctness of the llms can be uh, uh, enhanced and uh, also llms have some uh, bi bias problem they are biased towards gender and other biases they sometimes pre produce toxic and risky uh, uh, outputs there is fairness problem and explainability like suppose an llm given output why it gave a particular output so there is also research around these topics so uh, uh, this is the last slide where i will cover the bias part like and the other parts in bias there can be gender age confirmation and cognitive biases so for example i asked an llm that which uh, career suits female better it says nurses doctor hr this kind of things it uh, gives us an output and why is it biased for female towards a particular uh, type of profession because that is what it has learned in internet the internet data itself has bias it itself was biased it would have learned that wherever there is a mention of nurses or names it's more of a female name so in this way it would have learned from internet data that there is uh, gender bias and all but what when we release these llms we should ensure that there is these biases are not there so how can that be done uh, there can be we can we can create like a strong penalty for gender biases and uh, we can have human labelers label those as a risky outputs and that is how that this it, we can mitigate you know it's a research area in the, how we can mitigate this kind of biases gender age confirmation and cognitive biases toxicity or risky in response is something like uh, if i asked an open source llm which was not the uh, proprietary version or in, uh, it, it was more of an open source llm like, like the dolly databricks uh, llm i tried i asked it how to make a bomb bomb it gave me all the chemical names and which is very risky and harmful right it's against the ethical ai so for toxic questions detection or toxic output detection uh, again research can uh, is going on one way is that you can have a toxicity classifier that only give the output if it passes the toxicity classifiers uh, tests or other way is that we can have human label data and act is and make, make it as a strong penalty whenever it is violating uh, those uh, uh, training data where we have uh, trained it uh, to detect this toxic uh, uh, outputs and again fairness it should be fair towards different group gender age demographics and around the explainability enhancement like uh, in uh, research is going on to find that if uh, a particular output is emitted which words it gave more importance to so these are some of the so so yeah these are some of the research areas which are going around uh, any question before we go to the practical part Uh, have you explained? Uh, sorry, have you explored any frameworks to do all this kind of thing? As an example, to put the guardrails around uh, the LLM's answer, right? An auto already pre-trained LLM, as an example, OpenAI's LLM or Llama V2, right? And not at the time of training, but later on when it is generating answer, even after it has generated the answer, right? Kind of putting the guardrails that. It should not have this bias or uh, it should not have a toxicity more of a so just like we are checking the facts like yeah that. so uh, in uh, one of my works where we were releasing a model and we want to ensure that these things are not there what we did was we went through research papers and uh, not framework as something we came across but we definitely came across some of the techniques or some of the metrics which are used to evaluate the fairness of these models. Like you can have the demographic based grouping and within those demographic uh, grouping, which metrics will you look at? So we use some of the ideas from those papers to uh, ensure that as much as possible, our model is fair and wherever it's not doing good, then retrain the model, drop the features, which might be, uh, uh, which might be leading to that kind of, problem so this kind of things i have done not exactly the framework but learnings from research paper and which metrics to look at those kind of learnings i have uh, tried okay so next what we will do is we'll go to the fine tuning part and uh, here we will i will show that uh, loading the model in 8 bits and all so uh, what i did in this notebook is um, 
I took the product names and this is from Instacart data set. Instacart is a uh, Instacart is a data in Kegel uh, data set in Kegel and Instacart is a company which sells grocery items. So these are the product names. So I took this data set and uh, what I want is I want like we know that we uh, a uh, conversational LMS is more uh, towards uh, question answering type of we, we can train it or fine tune it towards more question answering type of use case. Here question in my case is the product name. I want the question to be the product name. I will pass the product name and I want the department name as an output. This is a simple example I will start with. So let's say I want to give product name as a question and I want answer as the department name. I can I can define what my question and what my answers is. So in my data set, the question will be the product name and I want department name as an output. So what I did, I loaded the model. I loaded to uh, in a uh, collab free uh, GPU that we get. I loaded a Llama 2 model, which is of 7 billion parameters and floating uh, BF 16. It's like 16 point floating decimal uh, and uh, it's started. So I loaded this model and you can see that I am loading it using the quantization techniques, four bit quantization type. So I loaded that model model and uh, it, it, it is a base model. So it's not the instruction tuned model, which is trained on question answering. I'm just loading a base model. And then what I did, I tried to before fine tuning, I tried to see what output it gives. And one more thing I want to call out. See, you can also see that I have also added this kind of um, symbol here. People use different symbol. It just signifies in my case that this is the end of question. And here from here, the answer begins so that during the inferencing for the test data, I will just pass the question. I will just part pass this much part and I would expect the department name as an output. So this is just a delimiter to make it learn that this, this is where the question ends. So I loaded the model in uh, using the quantization and then uh, didn't do fine tune. Just try to see what it emits. And here you can see it just emitting some link, some output uh, and so on, which is not the what we want, right? And it's fine because it's just predicting the next word because I have taken a base model. I haven't taken an instruct fine tuned model. I have just taken a base model, which is predicting the next word. So basically it would have learned in the internet. Once the product name comes, then some link comes where you can buy it from and the price of it or some description of it. It's giving those things. But in our uh, data set or in our uh, question answering, we want it to emit a department name, right? So this is uh, before fine tuning It's just emitting some random stuff. And then I have used the LoRa config and all those things. Now, now you will be able to relate why the theory is important. Like LoRa uh, R, which is the, this, like I was showing, right? Like we can use two smaller matrices to learn the parameters. So this is the parameter. This is the rank parameter of that uh, matrices. So this PEFT library, which is parameter efficient fine tuning uses LoRa config. So uh, this is the LoRa technique that we just learned in theory. And also we learned the quantization part. So we are using these techniques and we will now fine tune our model and post fine tuning. You can see that the error reduces and post fine tuning. Also, there was one, uh, uh, yeah, I will cover that later. So you can see that post fine tuning, the error reduces and let's see the result after uh, fine tuning. What is the data set size? Uh, so one more thing about LLMs, you need you don't need a lot of data to train to fine tune. I just use 200 samples or something, not more than that. And post fine tuning when testing or testing it on the test data set, we can see that given the product name, the actual department was babies and it is also predicting babies. Similarly, something frozen, it was frozen goods, coffee, liquor, the department was alcohol. It's giving me alcoholic beverage. Uh, similarly, you can see for meat, seafood, meat, seafood, personal care, personal care. So it has, Beautifully learned in our context to give the answer. And in our context, the question is product name and answer is the department uh, predicted or department name, which here is the original department. This is what it has learned. So this was a little simpler example. I will show even one more interesting example and where I will show you that how you can use it in your use case or some industry problems where uh, you have uh, cost uh, restriction. So what you can do, you can use a smaller parameter model. And in case the results are not very good, you can fine tune it on the result of a bigger model. So what I did, I similarly, I took a Llama, uh, here I took a Llama 2, 7 billion parameter model. And then uh, 
again took the product names uh, the use case is little uh, different here so what i want for each product i want three advantages and three disadvantages of it three advantages matlab ye product why should people buy why what are the advantages and what are the three disadvantages maybe if used in excess amount or something right so list three advantages and three disadvantages for all the products this is the problem statement that i am trying to solve then uh, i try to predict it uh, predict the output before fine tuning it's just giving me some random output some link and all those things right and um, then i created a data set using chat gpt i gave the same query to chat gpt and it nicely gave me advantages 1 2 3 2 and disadvantages 1 2 3 2 for all, for the product so i used 300 products uh, i took 300 products created a data set using chat gpt that what is the chat gpt's output and then i fine tuned it on chat gpt's output i fine tuned it on uh, chat gpt's output and uh, then you can clearly see the error is beautifully reducing from 1 to 0.5 and uh, like this is with quantization you can see that even with quantization the error is beautifully reducing and uh, using the loda config and all those parameters you can fine tune it for if you if you have a your other case you can uh, your use case you can find it for fine tune it for larger number of steps or epochs i am fine tuning it for 35 epochs beautifully the loss is reducing and post that the i get the results right and let me show you the results in excel where uh, it's more clearly okay, what is the error in this case are you comparing similarities uh, so, so i didn't get the point yeah i'm saying what is error in this case you're oh, saying the, that error has been reduced right ah, so loss so loss loss is that when you fine tune it right you tell it that this is uh, this is the data you fine tune it on so whether is it able to produce that kind of output or not that is the error and so you compare how similar it is right yeah, for for any ml model when you train it you will get an error and for a neural network model for every epoch you get an error error in this case or loss reduction in this case is as you are training how much is it able to learn the pattern you are showing it in the training data so the loss is reducing it is basically it is learning the pattern that i have shown it in the training data and when you compare the output see when it was raw output that is when without fine tuning it is it is just giving some random uh, stuff uh, and somewhere it is even giving the advantages i saw somewhere it was giving advantage it gave me five advantages but no disadvantage but post fine tuning through the chat gpt's data it is beautifully giving me three advantage 1 2 3 new line disadvantage 1 2 3 see it has learned even the new line advantage 1 2 3 new line disadvantage and this is on the test data this is these are the products it has never seen in training data so it has learned the pattern that what kind of question um uh, what kind of question will come which is the product name and what i need to emit and if you train it for more epochs the quality will even improve so uh, yeah so th these are the two examples and uh, many people have reached out to me even there was one question that how to uh, do it for document data so for documents uh, what people usually do is they create a llama uh, they create a llama index or lang chain index of it and then use that uh, like use that index uh, during the uh, that index is getting used during generating the answer and personally i have not tried it much if like i think i tried it in past when llama index was not there but lang chain was there i didn't get very satisfactory answer so i prefer i would prefer having a larger context model and passing more and more information in the context and that is now even possible if you see hugging face has really released this 32k context window so with this 32k you can pass more data in the uh, uh, context or or in the input so yeah mostly that's it i wanted to cover in the session i wanted it to end exactly at 11:45 but it took some more time but yeah any questions that are there i would be happy to take